welcome to another Silverbird Selection Game Review and today we're going to look at a classic that I'm sure all of you are already aware of. Any Commodore 64 fan is probably already aware of this game. It is Silver Range Game Thrust from 1986. Interestingly this was a budget release on the Commodore 64 and other platforms like the Spectrum but this actually originated on the BBC Micro this game and that's the version I'm most familiar with because I had a BBC Micro from about 1982 when I was a kid. Um, so it'll be interesting to compare the two. I have played this version in the past but I'm definitely more familiar with the BBC Micro version. That was released by Superior Software uh, and for some reason they didn't release games on any platform other than the Beeb so Firebird took on the licensing for it for all the other platforms and Although the BBC Micro version was the original version, actually the Commodore 64 version came out first, so not quite sure why that happened, just a production issue I guess. But yeah, so this was actually the first version, but not the original version, so quite unusual there. Anyway, so it's a very common game to find on eBay, you'll find loads of copies, generally goes for three to four pounds, although I got mine in a swap deal, which means its basic value was one pound 55, so I'm happy to get it for that price. Let's take a look at the packaging and then play this classic game. Okay, so here we have the packaging for Thrust and you can see a pretty nice graphic on the front there of the spaceship flying off into some kind of nebula or vortex or something like that with a pod behind it. Those of you that know the game well know what that pod is. Nice logo at the bottom there, Thrust, and again that's on the spine as well. But unusually, the picture doesn't actually wrap round to the back, the back's just a plain white and I think this is probably one of the earliest releases on this Firebird Silver Range packaging. I think, as I've mentioned, it came out in 1986 and I suspect this is one of the launch titles for this range or this packaging style. So you've got a quote there from Zap64 who gave it 94%. Thrust is immensely playable. There's no excuse to miss this slice of arcade action. And a couple of screenshots which you can't really make out very well because it is quite a dark game. There's lots of black on the screen. So we'll get to the what the screen looks like in due course. And the blurb says a brilliantly gripping arcade game requiring precise dexterity and a cool calculating mind. Can you beat it? Well, I'll tell you now I won't be able to, but I'll give it a go. So moving inside the packaging, you can see the list of games in the Firebird 199 Silver Range. And it's pretty small at this point, which again leads me to believe that this was probably a launch title. There's just the six games for the Commodore 64 there, including Thrust. So moving inside, we've got the in-crowd advert, which again makes me think it was a very early release. And then the blurb about the game, the instructions. You can see it's copyright 1986, Jeremy C. Smith. It's got a credit for the cover illustration there and also music by Rob Hubbard and then you've got the game description which is your typical sort of space battle game. You've been commissioned by the resistance to steal Klystron pods. Uh, the loading instructions and then playing the game as you can see there you can control your ship with the keyboard no joystick on this game it's probably quite unusual but when you see how the keys work it's probably not surprising that you can't use a joystick so it gives you all the scoring information as well including when you get an extra life and so on that's pretty much it for the instructions So there you can see the loading screen, it's quite atmospheric looking and as you just heard there's even a bit of sound there, quite unusual for a Firebird loader, in fact I think that's the first time I've heard any sound, not really any music but a sort of ominous tone to start things off before the loading screen is displayed and obviously then the game continues to load. But yeah that's quite a nice loading screen by Bob it appears. Okay, so the game's loaded, and as you can see, it's got a rolling demo of how to play the game, which is very useful if you haven't got the instructions. Obviously I have, but if you didn't have, if you'd obtained the game in a more nefarious way, then at least it shows you how to play it. 
It's also got a Rob Hubbard tune playing on the sort of title screen, which is basically just a high score table and then a rolling demo, so very arcade style, even though it's not necessarily an arcade style game. That said, it is quite heavily influenced by the Atari arcade game Gravitor, so I suppose it is arcade style. So there's no options on the game, it's literally just start the game and play. There's no, you can't change the keys, which might have upset some people. A lot of Commodore 64 players would have been used to playing with the joystick, so having to play with keys would be a little bit foreign to them. As a BBC Micro gamer, the joysticks on the B were particularly terrible, so I was used to playing with keys anyway. But the key controls are uh, A and S to rotate left and right, return to fire, shift to thrust and space to collect the pods. So very foreign, I would think, to most Commodore 64 players. Anyway, let's get on with the game. And there's no in-game music, so you only hear that Rob Hubbard tune on the sort of title screen. So the aim of the game, if you haven't already worked it out and you didn't already know from the demo and from playing it yourself, is to collect the little round pod and take it to the top of the screen and escape to the next level. The graphics are heavily influenced by Gravatar, as I said, they're sort of vector style, everything's drawn with vector style lines. Uh, or circles and the the landscapes are just a series of lines on top of each other as you should be able to see so just grab that pod which you do by holding down space bar when you get close to it head up to the top of the screen head to first level completed it does start off quite easily but it does get hard pretty quickly so these things sort of power station things you can shoot them you can't destroy them but you can shoot them try and show that you probably won't see it because when you shoot them the little chimney stops smoking for a little moment and during that period I believe the, uh, the laser turrets don't fire probably won't see that now because it's probably come back to life now but uh, maybe not so yeah so it's rotational controls like the classic vector game asteroids um, shift thrusts and you've got to make sort of move your ship close to things and then holding the space bar down will pick up fuel which you need to keep doing periodically throughout the game because if you run out of fuel you lose a life and also holding the space bar down will pick up the pod which you've then got to get to the top of the screen as I've already demonstrated so as I say not too tricky for the first couple of levels from this point onwards it does get a little bit more difficult as you can see, you get a bonus at the end of each stage as well. Sound effects are pretty nominal within the uh, game itself. There's the sound of thrusting, there's the sound of firing, and there's a few little explosion sounds and things. Basic sort of sounds you ex expect from a game like this, I guess. I do think it's a bit of a shame you can't have the music in game. I think. It, Although it's perhaps not a game that suits the music because it's quite tricky to play and the music might be a bit of a distraction. It would be quite nice to have the music while you're playing. So I think that's a bit of an oversight. Ooh. It doesn't take much of a thrust to get out of control in this game. And that becomes more and more problematic as the game progresses. I'm just going to pick up these fuel pods and then I'll go down and get the Klystron pod or whatever it's called and here's where things start to get a bit more tricky now because you've got to get this pod up to the top and there's a very narrow bit up here that you've got to somehow get it through I don't think the height of it matches the distance between your ship and the pod. So you have to try and swing the pod slightly to get it through the gap. Oh, I've done that quite well actually. But then the knock on effect is that the pod swings and hits the wall just like that. Luckily, if you get past that point, you don't have to go back and pick the pod up. So that's good news because that means I can now escape to the next level.
as I said, this is a very well-known game. I'd be surprised if anyone watching this hasn't seen this game before. Oh, oh, there we go. Lost control, trying to get away from that uh, laser turret there. Oh, for God's sake. Suddenly, it's becoming a bit of a mess. I'm not very good at this game. It requires a lot of precision, and I'm not good with games that require precision. Oh! It feels like the gravity is more powerful on this stage as well. That might help. Oh, for heaven's sake. Right, finally. Let's go and get some fuel. So here's... Oh, for sake crashed into the fuel supply thing yeah so pretty much everything kills you as well which doesn't help so here we've got a new addition compared to the previous levels you've got to shoot this little pod on the right here to open this gate there we go finally Right, okay. Now we've just got the small matter of getting back up to the top. Luckily I've just gone over 20,000 points, so I've got an extra life. And all we've got to do is get up here before the door closes. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Oh, this is narrow. This is where the swinging really starts to cause a problem. Oh. Made it. Amazing. Just another really narrow gap to get through now. Oh, no, there we go. Hopefully it's not going to send me all the way back to the bottom. No, it looks like it's just got to navigate this last bit again. Okay, so that completes stage four. Let's move on to stage five. And I've no idea what goes on here because that's the first time I've completed stage four for a very good number of years. So with not many lives, well, no lives left, this could not, may not last much longer. I might have another go. Oh, wow, okay. Oh. Uh. Oh, I just shot all my fuel then, trying to shoot that power station. Oh, 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 oh this is dangerous. Oh, the uh, the laser turrets do shoot randomly, so that does help because. They don't lock onto you, at least not in these early stages. They might do in later ones that I've never got to before. Oh, God. Oh. Oh, I just got an extra life just as I died then. That was lucky. Are we near the bottom? Oh, I don't know what's going on here now. Oh, okay. Oh, that's unfortunate. Well, there you go. That's game over. I'll give it another shot. I got quite a good score there. I'm quite pleased with that. I'll give it another shot, trying to get past that level and see how we get on. Not close enough. Yeah, very tricky this one, especially when it starts swinging as well. Oh, I'm going to hit it again at this rate. I just can't get it under control. The swinging's crazy on this thing. 
I'm just never going to get it under control now. Finally through the door. I'm going to have the same problem here now. I just can't keep the swinging under control. Oh, 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 that was close. Nearly there. No, it hit the wall again, but I think at least I'll have the pod attached this time. Yeah, so all I've got to do is try and get my way out of this little bit. Still got a life left. Right. One life left. Let's see how we get on with mission five. So as I mentioned, I used to play this a lot on the BBC Micro and the comparison with that version, I would say, oh, I would say I've crashed. The comparison with that version, I would say the graphics on that are a lot more vibrant because the BBC Micro only had eight colors but they were really bright, sort of arcadey style colours. So the vector style graphics looked a lot more vibrant on that system. But otherwise, they're pretty similar. Uh, and the control and everything is almost identical. I can't see any, I can't note any major differences. Um, so yeah, in terms of a comparison to that version, it's, it's pretty similar. It plays exactly the same. Ooh. Can't see myself getting out of this, but let's see how far we get. And uh, yeah, it's a mixture of the game of shoot 'em up with a lot of physics and a lot of geometry. So it's very mathematical. It's very technically impressive. You know, you've got to get the the angles right. You've got to take into account the gravity as well. Oh, and there we go. I'm shot and I'm dead, and that's game over. So. Not really a lot more to say about the game, it's a classic, a uh, very well known game as I've already said, uh, and well regarded. As you saw from the back cover, Zap gave it 94%, and it is a very good budget game. I don't think I'm going to go quite that high with my ratings, but let's go through them. Packaging I'm going to give a 6, it's not as impressive as some of the later Silver Range packaging, but it's still pretty nice, the instructions are detailed at least. Uh, presentation I'm going to give 7, it's got a nice high score table, nice Rob Hubbard tune on the title screen. Uh, it looks very nice, very arcade style with the presentation. So yeah, 7 out of 10 for presentation. Graphics, well, they do the job. They're meant to look like these vector style graphics from the arcade games, but you could argue that they're not that impressive, even though they're nicely drawn. So I'm going to go with 6 for the graphics. Same for the sound, although it's got the Rob Hubbard tune, I don't necessarily think it's one of his best and also the in-game sounds are fairly basic you know just the usual sort of things you'd expect so six for the sound and finally playability well it can be really frustrating especially when your pods swinging around all over the place but it is a nicely programmed technically impressive game and quite playable and quite addictive as well as long as you don't get too frustrated so playability i'm going to give seven that gives it a score of 7.2 which makes it exactly what you'd expect, a decent budget game, not absolutely outstanding like Zap said in my opinion, but I do still think it's a decent game and a classic as I've already said many times. So there you go, that's Thrust, not very good at it myself, if you're an expert at Thrust and you've got some later levels, then let me know in the comments, let me know your thoughts about the game and this particular genre of sort of collecting items in a little rotating spaceship and thrusting all over the place. I don't really know what other John you'd give it. So that's it for this review. I'll be back next time with another game review or perhaps a collection update as I have accumulated quite a few more games since my last collection update. Thanks for watching as always. Let me know what you think of Thrust in the comments and I'll see you again soon.